Our topic is calcifying epithelial adenogenic tumor. A calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor is a rare benign neoplasm located within the bone that produces a mineralized substance with an amyloid-like material. It is locally invasive but slow-growing. They are also known as Pinberg tumors and account for approximately 1% of odontogenic tumors. 94% are central and intraosseous, while the remaining 6% are extraosseous. They have been said to arise from the reduced enamel epithelial lining and the dental follicle or from remnants of the dental lamina known as the rest of serous. It is often asymptomatic and discovered on routine radiography. However, it may present as a slow-growing, painless, expansile bony swelling with cortical bone resorption. Most commonly, there are no clinical signs. Some lesions may show cortical expansion resulting in asymmetry of the jaw, most often in the posterior mandible, which is firm to palpation. Its peak occurrence is around age 40, but a range from 8 to 92 years has been shown. There is a male predilection and they occur in younger men and older women. The extraosseous variant has a predilection for the anterior gingiva while the intraosseous is more commonly found in the posterior mandible and associated with impacted teeth, most commonly the molars. Lesions show a 2 to 1 predilection to the mandible versus the maxilla. Radiographically, the lesion is most commonly found in the posterior mandible premolar to molar area, but may also be found in the posterior maxilla. The edges can be well-defined or ill-defined. The shape is usually irregular and associated with the crown of an unerupted tooth. The internal structure may be unilocular or multilocular radiolucency. Some lesions also present with small calcifications within the radiolucent area, which are concentrated near the crown of the unerupted tooth resulting in a mixed, radiolucent, radiopaque appearance. Other structures may be affected in advanced lesions, which may exhibit cortical expansion, cause displacement of the unerupted tooth, preventing it, its eruption, cause bone resorption or perforation. The numbers are variable, but it's usually singular. There are four differential interpretations. The first is calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor. Diagnosis is confirmed via microscopic examination with a histological presentation of sheets of polyhedral eosinophilic epithelial producing a homogeneous amyloid-like substance which may become calcified. The second is dentigerous cyst. This differential was included as the clinical signs, clinical symptoms, and radiographic appearance are similar to that of a CEOT. Described as an asymptomatic lesion often found on routine radiographic interpretation. Radiographic findings consisting of a radiolucent lesion are most commonly found in the posterior mandible associated with the crown of an unerupted tooth. It may be associated with cortical expansion and cause displacement of the unerupted tooth preventing its eruption. However, this lesion is more common in young adults. Microscopic examination is the only way to officially exclude dentigerous cyst from the differential diagnosis. Our third differential was odontogenic keratosis. This differential was included as the signs, clinical symptoms, and radiographic appearance are similar to that of a CEOT. Radiographic findings consisting of a corticated unilocular or multilocular radiolucent lesion, most commonly found in the posterior mandible, associated with the crown of an unerupted mandibular molar, often associated with cortical expansion and displacement of the unerupted tooth. It is most common in adults. Microscopic examination is the only way to officially exclude odontogenic keratosis from the differential diagnosis. Ameloblastoma. This differential was included as the clinical signs, clinical symptoms, and radiographic appearance are similar to that of a CEOT. Described as a circumscribed unilocular or multilocular radiolucency, often associated with the crown of an unerupted mandibular third molar. It is common in young to middle-aged adults. Ameloblastomas may cause display of the uninterrupted tooth, often inferiorly, and may also cause cortical expansion. Unlike CEOT, ameloblastomas are known to cause resorption of the roots of adjacent teeth and often extend into the ramus. 
Ameloblastomas may also exhibit a very characteristic soap bubble appearance. Microscopic examination is the only way to officially exclude ameloblastoma from the differential diagnosis. Treatment options include enucleation or curatage of smaller lesions. Large tumors require segmental resection, hemimandibulectomy, or hemimaxillectomy. Surgical resection via referral to an oral surgeon is the treatment of choice as the lesion is locally aggressive and will continue to grow, causing cortical expansion if left untreated. Frequent follow-ups are recommended as CEOTs have a recurrent potential. Referral to an oral surgeon is recommended due to the complexity of the surgical procedure and proximity to important nerves and vessels. Surgery should be done as soon as possible to deter continued growth of the lesion. The key points from our presentation are calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumors are usually asymptomatic, being found on routine radiographic exams. Some may be symptomatic with patients experiencing a swelling in the area of the lesion and asymmetry of the jaw. Clinical signs range from none to cortical expansion, asymmetry of the jaw, and firmness to palpation. Radiographic findings include a well to ill-defined ovoid radiolucency associated with the crown of an unerupted tooth. It is most commonly found in the posterior mandible and can be unilocular or multilocular. Advanced lesions exhibit cortical expansion and displacement of the unerupted tooth. The best treatment option is referral to an oral surgeon for surgical resection. Frequent follow-ups are recommended. These are the resources we used. Thank you.